Hey everyone, I am so excited to be here with you today. I'm going to go ahead and um, share mine so that we can get started. I uh, actually work in communications and so it's really different when I come on to these um, different conferences and actually share information because a lot of times you're so used to hearing specifically what the topic is about. And so we are talking about transfer students, but I want you to go beyond just figuring out how to be your best self and assisting that student within the office and take it a step farther by actually using those students as recruiting tools to bring even more students into your colleges and universities so that they too can be blessed and benefit from the services and the degrees that you offer. So we'll go ahead and get started, but we want to start right from the core um, with an activity. So if I can get three people uh, to either, either raise your hand or if you want to go ahead and start talking, um, tell me what in 20 seconds, your elevator speech is for your college when it comes to recruiting a transfer student. Does anybody want to volunteer? Uh -oh. Somebody, anybody? All right, I saw one, I think Miss. Risha? Yes, Risha Tony. Okay, yeah. What's your elevator speed? So um, we are one of the largest colleges in Canada. We have close to 30,000 full-time students and over 200 programs. Um, so a wide range of programs um, that um, almost anything that you want to study, you can find it with us. Um, and we are able to sort of help you transition from where you started to you know where you want to be next. I love it. I love it. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll do one because Risha and I are going to play a game. I serve all 24 of Alabama's community colleges through the Alabama Community College System. And our goal is to provide affordable, accessible, and flexible training to anybody in Alabama who wants a job. And that's pretty much how we sum it up. It, sometimes it leaves out that transfer student though, but for the most part, that captures every student that we have. So Risha, um, I'm gonna pick on you a little bit. We're actually gonna switch our elevator pitches. So <laughs> I'm going to pitch your college. I want you to pitch what I just said about my schools. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> um, all right. So there are over 24 colleges um, that are available for you to access. And this allows you to transfer from one college to another. You're able to take your, uh, the courses that you've done at one and move them to uh, one of the others. Um, and this provides you flexibility. Uh, it provides you choice and it hopefully takes you where you want to go in your future. Awesome, awesome. And I'm going to say that your colleges are over, well, your college is over in Canada. It's the best one there is, the largest yes. one there is, and students should definitely think about going there before anywhere else. Now, was that kind of close? That's perfect. <laughs> it was perfect. But if you really think about it, how much cooler is it for the person who has that experience and knows about that college or university to be able to tell that story versus hearing that information secondhand? Agreed, yep. That is where we are going in this presentation. We want to be the ones who guide our story, and we want to do that with the students that exist within our colleges already without reinventing the wheel, paying gazillions of dollars to these ad firms, um, and finding different newspaper ads in the community that we hope fall on good ears. And so that is what this presentation is about today. If you look at this first slide, hold on one second. If I can go back to the first one, even though I cheated a little bit and let you see it. Look at this first slide and tell me what each of these people have in common. They're all very funny. Yes, <laughs> they're all very funny. 
and they all have careers as actors and actresses, right? Well, here in Alabama, and I'm going to talk a lot from the community college aspect um, in speaking to our transfers, but here in Alabama, we're going to push uh, community college today. And the one thing that all three of these have in common is that each of them attended a community college before they went on either to pursue a career or to a university. In Alabama, again, we're going to take that a little deeper and look at these individuals. Does anybody recognize who any of these are? That's okay, because the only two I recognize before we started doing research and promoting these individuals were the second and the fourth. Um, Deontay Wilder is actually one of the top heavyweight boxing champions in the country. And then on the end, you have Mr. Jimmy West, um, who is part of the Little Big Town Band. Um, on the very first, you have Mr. Jorge Posada, who's a professional baseball player or was a professional baseball player. And we also have Keith Richards, who is the owner of Tzatziki's Restaurant all over the country. The thing that each of them have in common in Alabama is that each of them attended one of our community colleges. And in the same way that you had Queen Latifah and Eddie Murphy and Tom Hanks there to um, use as kind of heavy hitters in sharing their community college story, we tend to go to these guys and use their success stories and try to get our piece of the pie to say that they actually came to our colleges first and we were able to nurture them and help kind of guide them in the right direction. We all have to admit that we have to advertise and figure out how to reach these students. And sometimes star power is the best way. These stories are definitely worth pursuing because you never know who might hear this message and actually want to come to your college for more. So, um, oh, yes, they were all smiling too, <laughs> Corey. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we want to talk to you today, or I want to talk to you today about learning how to tell that student story, because let's be honest, if you're not in your media department or you're not on your media team, adding yet another task to the great work that you're doing to actually recruit, bring in, and assist students can almost be like eating an elephant, another courtesy to Alabama <laughs> in the road tide. But nobody wants to eat an elephant, right? And even if it's a bite at a time. And so that's why I'm here to help you guys with some resources to do this a little more practically, but also make it a priority in telling those stories on your campus. When you think about a good story, does anybody want to share what makes a good story or what sticks out when you're talking about sharing an experience of a transfer student? Let me have some hands. I would say that um, as long as people can relate to it, if it's a student, I had a, um, we had a student that lived with us for a while. He was from Panama, but he was at the community college. He did really well. He you know, graduated with the 394. He went on to one of the most successful business schools in Maryland. And, you know, he's just, he's amazing. You know, he was even a TA. And this is a student who started with ESL classes. So I think, you know, something that students can relate to, we have a lot of Latino students, so it was really, you know, it was powerful for anybody, you know, it's like, hey, he could do it, I could too. That is excellent. Did y'all take some opportunities to share his story throughout the community? I actually, I, I sent the information to somebody, but I mean, I don't know, you know, we, we do share um, the college that I work for does share stories from time to time, not that particular one, but yeah, yeah. So I think a story that students can relate to, you know, seeing themselves in it, um, see themselves in the story. That is excellent. And that actually brings up a really, really good point. Kudos to you for thinking to share that story. A lot of times we get so caught up again in our day-to-day -day job that you don't think to take that a step farther. But these opportunities yet again could promote and allow students to relate um, and want to be part of that story. So good for you for, for thinking that. A lot of times I come here and they don't, <laughs> that doesn't cross their mind. Like, oh, that was a good story, but I didn't think to tell anybody. Um, all right, so knowing what makes a good story, which obviously is relatability, even um, as we go from our day to day, we're attracted to those things that make sense. I want to share with you a few different pieces of the same story that we promote here in Alabama's community colleges. So this is the first piece of some success stories from a few of our students.
life doesn't wait for you. I ended up having a, a child and family of my own. And by then, you know, I still just had a high school education. I was always scared of transitioning from high school to college. I never knew exactly what I wanted to do when I was in high school. I spent 21 and a half years in the military, and there's not a lot of uh, call for that kind of work and reconnaissance and security in the civilian world. So I was struggling to find a job. People want experience. You can't get experience while going to college. I wasn't fully satisfied with, with my career. I really thought I was too old to go to school. All right, that's the first part, and stay tuned for the rest. Um, thank you, Birdie. That was a very good, um, very good point. And this one of these students actually had a similar story um, after spending time in the service and wanting to transition. The veteran stories are always awesome to tell. Um, so in general, I know we just have a little bit of time here, but I want to continue to talk about the makeup of a good story, the types of stories we want to tell, also where to tell these stories and kind of setting forth the goals that we have when we tell them. Then we'll get into a little bit of the weeds and talking about how to actually execute these stories, some top tools to remember, and some takeaways. The one thing that I constantly get in the comments when I do this presentation is that it's so much great information, but we just don't know how to make it more practical on our campuses. The only guidance I can give is making this a priority. If your completion numbers uh, matter to you, if your transfer numbers matter to you, then it needs to matter to you how to actually reach the students who are most impactful. And so I, again, I don't have a magical way to uh, make this happen, but I strongly encourage you with the tools that I provide and others that you research to make telling the student story a priority. Again, one of the benefits or one of the things that's in every good story is the truth that we're able to offer as colleges and universities all over the world. We're able to tell a story, whether we have one graduate or a million, about how somebody can enter into our doors and come out and be the most successful that they want to be because of the whole student experiences that we offer. So those stories automatically offer emotion. They give folks a call to action to want to be part of that Team who's just as successful. And they also give folks the, the feel good um, method of opportunity or hope of opportunity for their own lives. There's always a beginning, middle and end to a good story. And so sometimes we think about students and what their experience has been on campus. But just like our friend had said earlier about the student who lived with them for a while, excuse me, sometimes telling that backstory is just as essential as telling that story that's on campus. So keep that in mind when you're talking about telling a good story. <clears throat> One thing to also remember, kind of like what me and Richard did at the beginning, is when you're able to tell your own story through your students, you get to control the narrative and create your identity. And so there's a big difference in calling a newspaper or a TV station onto your campus to share a story about a student because they kind of get to formulate their own idea to map that out. But if somebody on your staff or your team is taking the time to interview students, whether in intake or in outtake, um, or just to talk to them um, on casual events and things that happen on campus, you get to take that information and guide it the way that you want to. We do something here, um, basically, system-wide where we highlight our top students every year. I went with a little Facebook um, a cell phone and a Facebook live capability and just interviewed a few different students about what they thought about community college before they transferred on to their four-year universities. I was able to put together on Canva, of course, hopefully <laughs> we're all familiar with Canva to an extent, um, the different little graphics that pulled their quotes. We were also able to produce videos um, and a couple other elements that we use to really share these student stories. And again, these are the top of the top students who got hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships to transfer to four-year universities. But we decided to take their story first in order to encourage other 
uh, students who might be considering those same paths to start a community college. Because one of the biggest misconceptions for us is that students with some of those higher ACTs who get full rides to four-year universities lose all of that money if they choose to stay home and go to community college first. And that is not the case. And these students were able to share that for us. So being able to find students to share the story that you want. We feature students all the time, um, particularly in our transfer, because here we have the Alabama STARS Guide, which pretty much ensures that uh, the core classes that you take at a community college will absolutely transfer to your four year. I know not all states have that, so we're very blessed to have that age or to have that resource. Um, but whether it's featuring something in the middle, like a program, whether it's specifically for fame uh, or transfer students, or if it's for work-based learning students, um, celebrating graduations, talking about different classes on campus um, that these students have taken, you can really take that story beyond just the student and also share the services that you offer in order to motivate students to come to your classes or come to your college. Do we have any questions so far? Oh, I know that's a lot of Panamanians. I talk very, very fast, but if you ever need me to slow down, don't hesitate to raise your hand and I will. Um, we have several success stories that we like to share uh, when it comes to the transfer student or just that student who's a non-credit student who's going to get a, um, a work-based learning credential and then uh, and wants to stack that up. Um, specifically, when it comes to your transfer students, though, one of the things that has worked really well for us are our day in the life stories. Um, we have a lot of students. We have one of only two um, junior college military academies here in Alabama. And a lot of those students go on to West Point and some of the other academies. Um, going there and just seeing what their training looks like in a day, day's time, the challenges that they have, the rewards that they have, they always reap really, really good um, results, results for us. Um, talking to the families of some of our transfer students is really good. Many times you'll find that your transfer students, especially the older they are, already have families and really are using this opportunity as kind of a bucket list to say that they've graduated and completed that. So to have a video or to have an article where they're highlighting what their life has been like, or they have their children or their parents highlighting what the experience has been like to watch their loved ones succeed. All of these things just really kind of stick to the heart um, in our feel-good stories that could bring students um, to your doors. Again, just highlighting programs and scholarships and services, particularly scholarships for transfer students, um, even if that's just a blurb in your local newspaper, is really essential um, because the way that you reach students isn't the same. It's not a one-size-fit-all. And some of the students that you saw at the beginning in the video, I'm about to show you the second piece of their story, many of them came to campus because of word of mouth or because of some of these stories um, that we were able to share in media, whether it was social media or whether it was on a flyer at their school about somebody else's success. So here's part two of their story. It's definitely been able to give me a head start on what college life is gonna be like? Going into college, it was like crazy because I was already ahead because of the dual enrollment. I didn't have to take certain classes. You don't have these massive classes. It's more individualized, I think. I feel like you connect with your instructors more. From the very first day, I had every instructor their personal phone number. They were very interested in making sure that we understood what we were doing. Truly, if I had not gone to Enterprise State Community College and the resources there were not available, I don't know if I would have gone to college right off the bat. I certainly wouldn't be two years debt free. We were able to uh, create a schedule that allowed me to still get my hours at work while attending the class. It was like a, a jump started. It does put me right back to where I was with my peers again. Awesome, awesome. So hopefully 
I have convinced you of the importance, if you didn't already think, <laughs> of telling these student stories. So now that we have gone from that area, we want to talk a little bit more about where to actually put these stories, where to talk about these stories. Um, I'm sure all of us have, at the very least, if you've been in education for a year, there are probably five stories that have stuck to your heart about your transfer students, whether it was from their experiences before they got on campus and how they recovered or were able to find better opportunities, or if they were just that whiz kid who knew exactly what they wanted when they sat in your desk that sat at your desk that first day and then just continued to thrive. We all have at least five of those stories that we could share. Um, we don't have to answer, but I wonder how many of us have actually thought to take that a step farther and actually let somebody else know that, whether it's media or somebody on campus. One of the easiest ways, if your mind hasn't really been framed to think that way, because again, you're the boots on the ground and your goal is really to, um, to motivate, encourage, and do the things that you need to on campus. Um, one of the easy things to think about, though, is in community or student events that you're a part of, think about ways that you can pull stories in or that you can share the stories of the students on your campus and see the interest that those stories have. And Sometimes when you get somebody nodding or agreeing with how amazing something is that you're sharing, let that, instead of just being a feel-good um, thing for you, be that motivation it takes to figure out what the next step is to get that story told. Um, if you have a media team on your campus that manages your social media, uh, really think about meeting with them to either set up a schedule or figure out some kind of way to funnel um, those different stories or different ideas about transfer opportunities and services onto your social media. If you have an internal media, even if it's a matter of sending an email once a month to share another transfer student story um, with students or with staff, um, websites even. There's so many different places that you can tell these stories. We do get into money sometimes when we're talking about radio or magazines or other paid media, but sometimes uh, newspapers welcome those stories for free. So just again, keep your mind flowing on the different ways that you can tell the different stories in your area. Now, when you think about how to tell these stories or when you think about um, what to tell, think about the goals that you want each story to reach. Um, I had one student when I was an instructor, I'm at a local college who needed a, a, a lot of help um, financially, medically. There were just so many community services um, that she needed to actually be able to succeed in school. And eventually she graduated only to run into so many immigration issues with her family back home. Now her story in itself of how she succeeded in college was amazing because of everything else that she had to go through. But that from an integrity perspective wouldn't have been wise on my part to share all of those other pieces when trying to feature her. Uh, so you really, really wanna dig deeper to think about the goals of why you're telling the story. And obviously the primary goal should be because you want somebody else to see this opportunity and be inspired and motivated to take similar steps onto your campus. Um, from there, again, you want to determine how and where you want to promote the story. The student that I'm talking of, that was a beautiful story to share internally just to motivate our faculty and staff to let them know, hey, when we go outside these doors and we help our students meet their needs, we are doing what we believe we were sent here to do. Good job kudos. Um, that's an amazing thing that motivates your, your faculty and staff, even though it wasn't a story that might have made it to the media. Um, always keep your audience in mind. A lot of us are state institutions. Some of us rely solely on um, private donations and funds many times. So anything that you put out, you know that legislators are watching in addition to students, um, government entities, and everyone else. And so make sure that you take care of the stories the way that you need to and you're not just haphazardly throwing student stories out there um, just because and then you want to determine the consistency of the stories and how you how you get them out there do you have time to commit maybe once a month to submitting a story to your media team or 
it does it have to be once a quarter? Whatever it is, you want to determine those things beforehand so you don't fall into this slump of telling a zillion stories, have folks looking for those stories, and then you don't tell them anymore. Um, in addition to trying to figure out where to tell these stories, you also, and who your audience is, you want to think about the things that reach most students. And now here in Alabama, um, we thankfully bucked the trend of having a decrease in student enrollment amid COVID. We actually increased um, about five to six percent in some of our technical programs, but we went heavy, heavy duty in the marketing and telling students stories at that time. In addition to our, our faculty, staff, and advisors and admissions teams doing what they needed to do within their communities. But one thing that was very important in that time and even now is considering the different audience ages that you're talking to. Um, I won't spend too much time on this particular slide, but this stuff, just like Facebook and social media algorithms, changes all the time. So keep in mind, based on what you want to talk about, uh, the type of means that you'll use. For example, if you're talking Gen X or you're talking millennials, um, a lot of those folks know what they want right off. So um, you can have a tutorial or a how-to, and that actually stick out to them. But when it comes to a Gen Z, they need something a little bit more. Um, so again, I know many of us are just now starting to tell the student story. This digs a little deeper. Don't worry about it too much on the front end. But over time, you want to start producing messages that you know will be received by the particular student that you want to get it to. Another thing to keep in mind is um, the branding and consistency when you actually do start doing those stories. Again, this is that piece <laughs> that goes a little bit deeper, um, but I want you to be thinking of how big this is at first so that when you do go back to your campuses, you don't start and you're not um, succeeding. I see one question here that says, what does lead mean? Basically, your lead is the very beginning of a news story. It's that first paragraph is typically about 45 words or less that talks about what the story is going to talk about. So it needs to be general, but specific enough to be eye-catching. Let's see, there's another question. You're so welcome, Fran. Yes, I've seen it spelled both ways. As a news reporter, um, we use L-E-D-E, -E, and I don't know why, but that's what our reporter, um, that's what our um, editor did, uh, but yes, it can be spelled that way as well. All right, so when we come to branding and consistency, this a lot of times lies within your um, media team to stay consistent, but if you have a primary logo that your campus uses, please don't cover that <laughs> with fancy clip art or other things that are on your campus just to make your advertisements prettier. Because when it comes to telling the student story, that can be done in something as simple as a flyer, right? So if you have a brand styles guide, or again, if you just simply have your student, your um, logo, make sure that when you're sending that to um, news agencies, or even when you're sharing internally, that those things are consistent. You also want to do that with branding things. When we went through uh, COVID and we didn't have access on our campuses, we created a video um, slide called Access Granted. It was a video series that um, garnered over 10,000 subscribers within the first few months that it was out there. That was exciting to us because it let us know that students still wanted to know about their community colleges. Communities still wanted to know how to gain access and so we were able to feature many transfer students in this time period about where they had went after they left our doors, um, especially those who were working in the medical field on the front lines at that time. We also produced a How You Learning series, and I know that that's not <laughs> grammatically correct, um, but it was basically something that showed all things community college. So whether it was learning the difference between um, for credit and non-credit, um, learning the different areas of the transcript, learning um, what it meant truly to be a virtual student versus a hybrid student. We offer those little tidbits of news all throughout our social media to keep people engaged with what we had going on. Let's see if there's another question. Gotcha, thank you, Karen. 
And then again, this is just a little bit more, uh, a little bit more information when it comes to branding and consistency. You see that we have flyers that marketed several different programs um, at several different campuses, but the consistency was very similar. You can save things like this in a Dropbox, um, in a Google Drive, SharePoint. All these different resources are out there for us to do that, but you want to make sure that your branding and your consistency um, is, is on point when you're giving these stories. Another thing you want to remember is that you just calling a news agency to share a story is good, but why not just tell the story yourself, like we talked about at the beginning. Um, you see here in the story about the Elmore County Nutrition Program, when COVID happened here in Alabama, our schools still had tons of food that they needed to get rid of. And so what one particular county did is start bagging or gathering a volunteer, volunteer school um, lunchroom folks to bag these groceries up and um, deliver it to the different communities via buses. You also had some that created little areas for the parents to actually drive up and get a bag of groceries. Their whole effort was um, on social media was to tell people about this in the community so that they could come get the food. Well, local news caught hold of it and made this a magnanimous story um, for communities all over the state and other school systems started catching on. That might not have been their initial intent, but by them sharing their own story, um, they were able to not only cross post or share what they wrote, but also what these other state agencies were writing about them in newspapers and media and interviews. And it was just a really feel good story that at the core was informing those people in the community, but it also helped other kids get fed, I believe, by other schools saying, hey, we can do that thing too. So think about, again, those domino effects when you're telling a student story. Hey, somebody speaking? <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so you can cro uh, cross post a story um, more than once. And I always put this, don't forget about print because I'm an old newspaper reporter before I came into um, higher education. And a lot of times we don't think about building a relationship with our local newspapers, but that is very important. All right, from here, do we have any questions before we kind of go into the last leg of this? Thank you all for, for being so receptive. Check. We don't have any. righty, cool. So now we're going to talk about um, video releases and other top tools. And I thought I had talked about this earlier. I just want you to keep in mind that not every story that you tell is free. <laughs> so you want to, okay, cool, Clarissa, I'll answer that in just a second. So you want to make sure that when you are talking to these folks that you have something on file in addition to their FERPA that gives you permission to actually um, talk to them and share their story. Um, and now the question was, how do I get students referred to me? It's a really good question because here at the system office, while I assist all 24 colleges, we don't actually have students here. So I'm constantly building relationship and reaching out to our 24 colleges and asking their public information officers if they have students um, that I can interview who have either transferred um, or are planning to transfer or if they have some folks in the workplace who I can interview who transfer there. We have several doctors and legislative officials in Alabama who actually started at the community college. Another way that we tend to recruit students or bring them in is to do these all calls on our websites and our social media. And we ask them, hey, do you have a story that you can tell? Did you attend an Alabama community college? And that way we compile, we actually did an award-winning campaign called Go Far Alumni, where we compile their stories, feature them in a really nice picture and an article on our website um, and, and share their stories. So there are a couple ways that we get students in and kind of have this running list, <laughs> this waiting list of students who are willing to share how community college has changed their life. Thank you for that question. 
All right, so I know this is a lot, <laughs> but if you want to screenshot this or look at this presentation later, I want you to keep note of all the resources that are available when it comes to telling a student's story. Your phone and the camera there and social media is probably one of the best tools that you can have because it's nothing to snap a quick picture of a student or to a quick um, video link of a student who wants to share their story. Um, so I strongly encourage if you're a little more elevated to consider the Adobe products like Premier Element, but that cell phone is going to be your best bet. Um, there are different ways that you can store your contacts, whether that's through Google um, or a Microsoft effort um, or Microsoft's program where you can actually store that. Design wise, is anybody not familiar with Canva? Um, Canva is like magic, <laughs> I like to think. It's so many um, stored um, areas, stored um, presentations even these days and flyers and things that you can use and modify um, that are really, really good when it comes to design, putting something out there really quick, even video templates with movement where you can take that cell phone video and plug it into one of these Canva templates to have that consistent brand going where you're sharing your story. Um, I added this organization and time management area here. Um, even Facebook has a calendar these days when it comes to social media. But toggle track is one that I discovered recently because, again, we know that our days are loaded, but we want to make telling the student story important. So what I did is I, I it started a free account at toggle track and it helps me track how long i'm spending on each piece of something every day and so um, i try to dedicate at least 30 minutes a day in either tracking down these stories or figuring out a way to share student stories or student information and that really helps me um, story resources eab um, nists all of these are amazing resources when it comes to finding an angle to talk about transfer students. Um, and sometimes just reading these reports, you can identify students that you can go to to tell the story that you want to tell um, or to talk about resources um, that you want to share. And so I use all of these, give or take, at any point in time just to kind of keep that flow going. But again, <laughs> my job full time is to tell these stories. So hopefully some of these things will um, help you in your day to day. And I'm happy to go over more details later. Let's see what questions we have. Oh, yes, I love Canva too. Amen. <laughs> Canva is the bomb.com. All right, so now let's get over to our takeaways before I tell you the last little bit of that story. Again, make time to learn more about students. If you don't have the time, find somebody on your campus or your um, your funnel of, of schools that's willing to help tell these stories. There's usually always a work study student. There's usually always a, an admin who's willing to be able to sit down and make a list of some students to stick out and figure out a way to tell their story. There are also some easy grabs if you don't have the time to do it yourself, where you can talk about students. Um, I'm sure most of us release president's list or dean's list. You can comb through those lists and find out somebody that sticks out because it's information you're being fed anyway and telling to the community anyway. So um, just really figure out how to find that happy space to make student stories a priority. Even if in your intake process, there's an extra form that you let them fill out that says about me, whatever it takes, figure out a way, kind of like these students. And this top story is um, very, very special. This one, I don't know if you saw it in your local publications, but it happened in Alabama where a student just decided that they didn't want to go to graduation that day. And their boss, like the headline said, was well, not having it. Um, so they held a special graduation for this student our community college picked that story up and that student is on a pretty full ride um, at our community college now. How Imagine how many stories like that can stick out in your community um, that nobody could probably even be thinking of until they were just at the right place at the right time. You wanna have at least three touch points per story, kind of like that story I told y'all about the food nutrition program. 
that was on social media. It was within their learning management system where parents had access um, to those stories. And it also was in several different newspapers just because they were willing to share their own story. So take a look at that so that it's not wasted time where you just put this cool story out there and nobody reads it and figure out exactly where to place these stories. Um, when you're featuring a student, you also want to get them involved in telling their own story too. I love the graduation stories that come out or even the employment stories that come out because students really get to share how colleges have changed their lives. And when they share it and we share it, imagine how much ground that covers. Um, and it's so easy to do, particularly on social media. You want to represent yourself well. This goes back to branding and standards, guys. And I'm always more than willing to um, walk with somebody to show them how to at least get that base um, set up so that you can have easy access and be a little more consistent in your schedule with sharing those stories. And then finally, if you're looking for stories, kind of like my friend asked a little earlier, you want to join organizations or groups on Facebook to find out ideas on the latest trends. Um, and these are just some general ones for this presentation that happen everywhere, but local chambers of commerce are everywhere. First generation students, if you have trio services on your campuses, there are usually some quick places to find some good transfer stories. Fitness for teachers, you'd be amazed at how many teachers all over the world are there talking about how their days are impacted by certain students. Kind of, You can kind of follow some of them. Um, Transfer Nation is a good one, particularly for transfer students. Um, and then the Achieve Conference here in Alabama, kind of a shameless plug, um, is also a really good place to try to find some folks that are speaking the same language as you and able to um, share some cool ideas on how to get those stories. And so with that said, I want to share the last part of the success story of the students that we feature here. I graduated Morris the Field, uh, Morris the Seven. I was on the job. One of the friends that I met in the class, we went to a job fair in Tuscaloosa and we both came away with jobs. I got an internship here at APR, which eventually led to getting hired on. I don't have to go work at a job that I can't stand anymore. You know, just to pay the bills, now I can go do something that I enjoy doing and still make a make a better, better living than what I was doing. Before I graduated, I had interviewed with four different hospitals. I had job offers from three of the four, and the fourth one called me back after I accepted the position here. I mean, being 21, I have a paid off 2017 Mustang. I mean, that's probably not a lot to other people, but to me, that's, you know, we got my own car now. I hold down a mortgage, and I'm just 22. You're gaining the work experience that employers are looking for uh, on top of further your education and getting the degree that you seek. I owe my career and the start of my career to Enterprise State Community College because they laid those initial building blocks and that foundation for me. But it's not about being a degree mill, it's, it's literally about setting you up for success and if, and if they can, getting you that employment that we all really want. All right, now hopefully you all were um, able to ignore the fact that our friend was so excited about his Mercedes, even though he worked at um, <laughs> Toyota. Hopefully you were able to see the um, cooler parts of that, that each of these students had a story to tell. And it's just such an honor to be able to share that and put it out there so that even more students can have that. So I thank you for listening. I see we have a few questions. So Dojo here, Risha, is one of the learning management systems that our elementary schools tend to use. I think uh, for the most part, many of them use it for um, behavior um, where they can communicate with the parents to let them know how their children are behaving. But there's also an element to it, kind of like Remind, where teachers can let their parents know um, what's going on in the classroom. And so that's a good resource here for some of our elementary folks who um, come to these presentations and want to know how to communicate. 
thank you all so much for the um the the feedback i appreciate that and i hope that you're able to use much of this information are there any other questions yes ma'am um anna this will be available to watch later to my um, understanding is that right lexi yes cool cool cool, cool. anybody else Cool. Well, if nobody else, this is all of my information, all of our channels so far. So if you ever want to watch anything, ever want to get some tips, then we are right here and available for you. Let's see. You're so welcome. All right, Lexi, well, I think, let's see. Yes, the PowerPoint will be available for download as well. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming and participating and being so respectful in this session. I really appreciate that. And Ebony, thank you so much for sharing your time with us and all of your insights. Um, I will put the link to the survey reminder in the chat for you guys, but it's also in the app if you want to access it that way. Um, thank you guys so much. This has been a wonderful meeting and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you. Bye, everybody.